morning guys welcome to heart heart ministries bernadette jones here and today we are continuing in our series giving your heart to god so we've talked about submitting your heart we've talked about stranding your heart and tonight we're or today <laughs> we're going to talk about guarding your heart and so proverbs 4 23 which is the first scripture i want to talk about it's our foundational scripture it says above all else guard your heart for everything you do flows from it and then there's also scripture that says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so that's another reason why it's important to protect it because whatever is in your heart is coming out of your mouth and so why should we guard our heart um because your enemy prowls around like a lion you know scripture says satan prowls around like a lion seeking who he can devour and he also comes to steal kill and destroy and we know a lot of part of faith is speaking so if what is in your heart is coming out it's either going to be faith or it's going to be doubt and also matthew um 12 34 says brood of vipers how can you being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so you know we just touched on that scripture and that's matthew 12 34 and this was meaning whatever you put in your heart is coming out of your mouth if you're putting the word in your heart then the word of faith is coming out of your mouth so that's why it's so important you know scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so when you start putting scripture in your heart and how do you do that you're listening to it you're you're reading it you're spending time in the word that's what's going to come out of your mouth and yes we can be in church and say all the right things in church but when pressure hits when the storms of life hit what is really in you is what is going to come out of your mouth so if you really truly believe the promises of god that is what is going to come out of your mouth are is scripture if you don't truly believe the word then doubt and fear is going to be what is coming out of your mouth as opposed to faith and quoting scripture and even as you as you grow it's it's a conscious it's a conscious thing because you're gonna have to fight your flesh on that and be like nope this is what the word says or even when you're around other people and they're speaking doubt or they're speaking fear you don't agree with it not even being silent because in your silence you're agreeing with it just think about um you know we train our kids if you're watching someone being bullied and you don't say something you don't do something you don't let an adult know if you're standing there silent you're right there with the bully you're co-signing on what's being done you're saying that's okay and so when even people are around you and they start saying they're always broke or start complaining to not speak in faith what the word says or to even be like i don't receive that no i'm abundantly supplied for um you're co-signing on that and so that's becoming a part of you because what that will do is that negative thought will get in your mind and will start to replay over and over and over and over again and eventually it is going to come out of your mouth because what we meditate on what we focus you know on what we're constantly thinking about it gets in our hearts and we start to believe it and so as we start to believe it it's going to come out of our mouth and when it comes to the word so i spending time in the word is so important because you've grown up believing these things opposite of the word because you've heard them for so long and you've heard them from so many people and it's just it's been in you for so many years because you've heard it for so long so now you have to consciously start getting the word in you to break some of that in you and start speaking faith and start speaking what what the word says and so really protecting what you're taking in and what's getting in your spirit And it says, if you're, you know, not putting the word in your heart, then doubt, unbelief, and fear will be kind of coming out of your mouth. And it says, if you're putting the word in your heart, then the word and faith is what will be coming out of your mouth. So how do things, how do things get in your heart? Um, You know, what you watch on TV, what you listen to, people will be like, oh, well, that's just entertainment or it's just a song. But so much of what you see consistently you will start to create in your life like people who who watch a lot of dramas will start to create drama in their own life 
because it's what you're constantly seeing. It's, it's just, you know, constantly being fed to you. Um, and the same thing with, with faith. If you're constantly listening to the word or listening to, to teachings or faith filled, you know, music or word of faith music that lines up with scripture that is going to come out of your mouth even I listen to a lot of stuff um in regards to faith music and I'll be at work and just singing to myself and having a great day and just because that's what's in me so it's coming out of my mouth it's in my car all the time I listen to it at home if you ride with me for any length of time in my car you are going to hear either a sermon or you are going to hear some Christian music some faith music that is based off the word that's just, that's what you're going to hear. So when I'm in a sense idle, and like I said, I can be at work and we all know we get to the point we can do our jobs in our sleep. Um, when those stuff starts coming out of your mouth and it's typically a song, what is that? And it's coming out of you because it's what's in you. And so um, there is doctrine, a method. Um, a message in the music you listen to and what you watch so there's a message actually in the music that we listen to and it's a doctrine and it gets indoctrinated in you because it's played over and over and over and over and over and over again um and it's just it's just one of the instruments you know music is really catchy and like most of us we know commercials and they're irritating and we have the theme song stuck in our head and it's just like oh like i want it out of my head but it's because it's it's so easy when you put stuff to music. It's so easy to learn it. And same thing when it comes to, to faith music. You want music that lines up with the word, the lyrics. Let's, yes, the beat may be nice, but what are the lyrics? What is the message? Is the message one that lines up with the word? Like, trials don't make you strong. The word says the joy of the Lord is your strength. So... Do you have a song that backs that up? Are you listening to songs that back up? Okay, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Not, oh, the storm came to make me strong. No, the storm actually came to destroy you. Satan sent the storm to destroy you. But the joy of the Lord is your strength. So when you need strength, it's the joy of the Lord. So do you have music that's going to have those lyrics that's going to back up that scripture and that's going to get that in you and get you excited? Okay, let me get back in strength. Let me get my joy up. Let me get, and it, and it doesn't make sense, but this is the word. This is the way the kingdom operates. The joy of the Lord is your strength, not the storms make you stronger. No. No, it's not what the word says. And so, you know, he. what does Satan come to steal? everything God has given you your joy your peace your healing your prosperity yes your prosperity finances and your freedom he wants to keep you bound he doesn't want you to be free he wants you bound and kill who you your children anybody in your life he can get to he will kill and destroy what destroy your life in, in any way he can. That's what he does. He steals, kills, and destroys. Death. Destruction. That is what Satan does. And so that is what, what we need to guard our hearts against. Because, again, what is in you is coming out of your mouth. So if you're believing the lies, because what we say goes. Because even with faith, it's speaking and, you know, we always say, you know, watch what you say, because what you say continually will manifest. And so if you're constantly speaking the word and the promises of God, boom, great. But if you're constantly speaking fear, doubt, you can expect that because that is truly what what you believe. And ex uh, one example of uh, things being planted, because we think it's just, oh, well, it's just entertainment. It doesn't mean anything. Um but so often we don't realize, especially in our children, what they watch comes out of their mouth. And it's not just like the words when you're like, where did you hear that from? And they're like, oh, well, I just watched something on TV. Well, yeah, that gets in them too. But I remember at one church I went to, these girls no more than eight years old were playing this little question game, like little kids do. And it was, what would you do if? And one of the questions, um that they were again I walked up on this and one of the questions 
was what would you do if you caught your boyfriend cheating? You're eight years old. Why are you even talking about having boyfriends? But anyways. And so one of them said, I would pack up his stuff and, you know, whatever. And I kind of stopped listening after that because my question was, how would you have access to his stuff? And she couldn't really answer it because she didn't know. But I know what you've been watching is you've been watching because it said boyfriend, not husband. So you've been watching shows to where couples are living together who are not married. And it's already in you, that seed is already planted in you that A, it's okay to live with your boyfriend because you would have access to his stuff to pack up his stuff. But you're eight. You don't realize it's there, but it's planted. And so in what she was watching, because again, they were also telling about how they watched MTV and they were staying up late and watching all this stuff. And I'm like, dude, you're eight years old. Like you're, you're a kid. Why are you watching this stuff? I wasn't watching that when I was eight and you don't need to be up late watching any of it. But that's how much things get planted. And that's how Satan gets it in our kids, in what they watch and what they hear. Because, you know, kids will regurgitate anything. And you're like, where'd you hear that from? Do you know what that means? And she's like, no. Because think about the songs that you listened to as a child. And you sang when adults were like, don't be singing that. And then you hear older, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I was singing about that. And it can be a, most of them had a sexual innuendo in the song. But your kid, you don't know. You're just saying the words and you know the whole thing. Um. But it's still a thought and a doctrine that is in you because you heard it so much that you don't realize it is now something that you believe and it is now a part of you. So you want to make sure when it comes to, you know, to guarding your heart, you don't want to get that stuff in you because regardless, it is going to come out of your mouth. Because we can, like I said, in church, we can say the right things in church all day long. But when it comes to those life situations, that's really when what you believe comes out of your mouth. And yes, it may take some time, you know, to dig stuff up, you know, to, to uproot some of that um, and your core beliefs. But the word, you protect your spirit, you protect your heart and you make sure you're listening to stuff and you're watching stuff that lines up with the word because you are a child of God and you are Christ's ambassador. You are a representative of the kingdom of God, which means I need to look like him, talk like him and act like him. And I have to protect what I listen to. I have to protect and not just me. I have to protect my children because God has entrusted me with them. So I have to make sure they're getting, because I understand they're going to go to school and listen to stuff and hear things, but they need to hear enough at home and not just on Sundays when they go to church hearing the word for an hour and then they don't hear or read anything again for the rest of the week until they go to, to Wednesday at Bible study or until they go to church again on Sunday. But make sure even at home, Sunday night through Saturday, It's, you know, the word, the music they're listening to lines up with scripture and the messages they're listening to line up with scripture. So, and thank you guys for joining us for this heart to hearts on guarding your hearts and join us next week for, as we continue in our series on giving your heart to God. You guys have a great one.